Juan Soto, to put it bluntly, has not had a good start to 2023. He's swinging and missing through more pitches this year, which kind of goes against his entire M.O. And when he does make contact, he's basically all but stopped hitting line drives. When you're popping up more times than you are hitting line drives and pulling ground balls on pitches you previously drove the other way, it leads me to believe that this starts with the swing, at least partially. Before we begin, it is important to note that Soto has two swings, his regular swing and his two strike swing. In 2021, notice how he's standing more upright. The bat is raised higher, more above his head, and is further away from his body. And you can see how there's also more bat movement pre-pitch, which I believe is meant to help Soto time and track the ball. On the other hand, the bat movement today isn't as pronounced, and the bat is lower and closer to his body, which to me makes his swing look tighter, more forced, and almost out of sync with his lower half. Focus on that front elbow. In his time with the Nats, his swing looks more loose. It's one smooth, continuous motion, and when the ball reaches the plate, he just snaps the bat at the ball. But this year with the Padres, it's almost like he reminds himself to tuck that elbow in and he adds one additional step to his swing, which I believe A messes up his timing and B doesn't allow him to fully extend the barrel on the outer part of the plate. I also want to take a look at his feet. Let's start with the front foot. In a non-two strike count, Soto starts with that front heel already raised and slightly facing towards him. What's changed is where he starts with that front foot. You can see how before, it was closer to the line, closer to the pitcher, but now it starts closer to the middle of the box, and instead of a slight toe tap, it now resembles more of a mini leg kick. This motion with the front foot works as a timing mechanism, and I believe is the root of why Soto is rolling over so many pitches. Now the back foot. So before Soto would squash the bug with that back foot, and when he swung, it seemed like for a split second, he'd have that bat frozen in time, just waiting to connect barrel to ball and let physics take over. It's simple physics. But now it seems like his back foot drags at times. So instead of planting that back foot and using it to direct or drive all his momentum forward, he drags it and opens up his hips just a bit too early and in a sense that momentum drags with him as well. I'm not sure why that is necessarily, but I do have a theory that he might be experiencing pain in that back foot after all these years of using a setup that has transferred a lot of weight on that back foot. Again, that's pure speculation on my part, but depending on the severity of the pain at certain times could explain the inconsistency with that back foot. If you combine these two factors, I think it's at least a starting point in figuring out what's behind Juan Soto's struggles, specifically his timing. Now, I'm definitely no swing expert, so take this with a grain of salt. But right now, it just doesn't seem like Juan Soto is getting the most out of his current swing. Or who knows, maybe I'm just totally off base here. If you think so, let me know down below. And also feel free to point out anything else you might see different in his swing. Look, the truth is Juan Soto already has as high a floor as anyone to begin the 2023 season. I don't necessarily buy that he's struggling because he's taking too many pitches. Sure, he could stand to be a little more aggressive. Who wouldn't? But you have to understand that is and always will be a part of Soto's game. It's what's made him so good in the first place. His time with the Padres has definitely been an enigma. But I mean, he's doing most of the good things that you're supposed to be doing as a hitter. He's not chasing pitches out of the zone, like, at all. Only two hitters are walking more than he is, and those two hitters don't have the number of plate appearances that Juan Soto has. He's still hitting the ball extremely hard, like Vlad Guerrero, Shohei Otani, Mike Trout kind of hard. And he's also run into a bit of hard luck. These things tend to normalize over the course of a 162 game season. That's why the season is so long. So we can be glass half empty and only gripe about his surface numbers. Or take the glass half full approach and realize that we still have 5 whole months to go. Given Soto's age and ceiling, I'll choose the latter. I have to. My fantasy team depends on it. 